You cannot soundproof with zero space loss. Anyone who tells you that is lying or slightly confused. However, I don't want to pull you in and clickbait you right away. I do want to tell you there are ways to minimize the amount of space you use when soundproofing a room. And that is what we're going to cover in this lesson on sound isolation. So let's start by killing the myths that are probably perpetuated out there on the internet. And I'm worried that you might fall prey to one of them. So let's go over it first. You cannot use foam or acoustic panels or acoustic curtains to sound isolate. All those things will not stop sound. So if you took a bunch of one inch foam pads and covered your wall thinking that that's gonna give you sound isolation, it's not. It's only gonna help a little bit with the reflections off that wall back in the room, but even that is not gonna do much. Another myth a lot of people think of is, hey, can I just glue one extra layer of drywall? Can I glue 5 8 inch drywall to my wall? Or could I buy some of that really expensive soundproof drywall on the market and glue that to my existing drywall? The answer is no, because all you're doing is adding mass, but there are three pillars to sound isolation that are very important. And if you don't have all three, you don't have a sound isolated system. Those are, you need mass, you need air tightness, and you need decoupling. By adding an extra layer of drywall to our wall, we might be getting mass and we might even get a little bit more air tightness if we acoustic sealant around it, but we're really missing decoupling. We're not decoupling that mass from the exterior wall, which means that we will still hear vibrational noise coming through that wall. So what is the smallest wall we can design that actually works for soundproofing? Let's dive in and let me show you. All right, so the smallest wall we can create is using these Genie Clip RSTs and Hatch Handle. There are a lot of different acoustic clips on the market, but I prefer these ones right now because they offer the best low frequency performance uh, on the market. And I just like that they're easy to source from one of my favorite stores, the ISO store, um, which I'm a little bit partial to these days just because I like them as a company. That said, the way we do this is simply we have these clip to the studs on your wall or your ceiling. You then clip this 7 8 inch furring channel into the actual clip right here and then screw your two layers of 5 8 inch drywall into the channel. Here's an example of the installation of this down here. You can see that it's going in, clip the channel in, and then attach your drywall. Now in this, they show only one layer of drywall. I would never design a wall with one layer. I always use two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. That is gonna get you an STC rating uh, in the 55 range. If we look at this over here, this is actually on my blog, we're looking at STC charts. You can see that the 55 rating means that loud sounds can be heard but are very faint. With just one layer of drywall, just so you know, even though that gives you less space, you're gonna be knocking yourself down significantly into the 35 to 40 range of STC. And that's just not gonna be soundproof enough in my book. Here's another chart to compare. Again, loud music barely heard. If we go too low, we're hearing loud speech and music um, is blocked, but we're gonna hear some of that bass stuff. Um, so we gotta be careful going below the STC 50 rating. I don't consider anything below STC 50 really considered soundproof. And 65 plus, as you can see here, is very soundproof. So that is the general system right there. And you're probably wondering, okay, Wilson, well, how much space does that take up? So the total space of this from the stud wall all the way to two layers of drywall is gonna be one and five eighths of an inch. That's a very magical number. I use it all day long. One and five eighths of an inch is the gap that you're going to get from right here all the way to the inside of the drywall. Sorry, I misspoke there. So from here to the 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 flange of this furring channel is one and five eighths. Then you add the extra two layers of drywall and you get one and a quarter inches. So that is your total distance there. So the total distance from the genie clip on the stud wall to the interior of your room would be two and seven eighths of an inch. Some people might feel like that's way too much. I tend to feel like that's actually pretty good. Now I will say one other thing that's very important here. In sound isolation, the distance between the layers of drywall on our wall system, so let's say you have a two by four wall, 
you've got two layers of drywall on one side, then you have the genie clips and the two layers of drywall on the other side. The larger the gap is between the two layers of drywall on the left side and the two layers of drywall on the right side, the more isolation you're gonna get. This is known as increasing what we call the spring or the springiness of our mass spring mass sandwich, which is what leads to sound isolation in the first place. So the larger the air gap, the more sound isolation you're gonna get. So keep that in mind. There's this counterintuitive thing where we wanna use up less space and get better results, but the physics just doesn't necessarily work like that. So this wall that I've explained here for you today is the smallest actual wall I'll build in any sort of soundproof studio that I design. Now there are ways to get even more out of that design and it's important mentioning that here. If we look at the Genie Clip LB3, also still sold at the ISO Store website, we can see that they've created this interesting L bracket. Now this is the important part right here that you want to read. Reduced insulation profiles, lower ceiling drop from 1 and 5 eighths of an inch like I said earlier, to just a quarter of an inch. Now that's incredible and it's probably what most of you would want to do. Even though I just said that lowering it to a quarter of an inch will technically reduce the STC rating and the overall sound isolation of the wall, this is a game we often play. Are we still going to get enough isolation? Yes, we're getting decoupling. We're hitting the three soundproofing pillars that I often talk about on this channel. So by getting decoupling and still reducing our airspace, we're still getting at least sound isolation to the quality that I would recommend. So while I don't use these clips often, also because they're much more expensive at the $8 per clip range, they are a viable option if you want to place these on the inside of your ceiling. So this would attach to the inside of your ceiling joist and be recessed so that there's only a quarter of an inch between the bottom of your furring channel and the actual studs. It's super important that the drywall itself doesn't touch your studs because that defeats the whole purpose altogether. So a quarter of an inch is pretty standard for sound isolation when we're trying to decouple. A quarter of an inch means sound will not jump through that air gap that you've created. Another thing you may hear about, and I've talked about it on my channel before, before are hush frame rafts. And I used to be a huge fan of these. There's a lot of benefits to them. You can use wood furring, which is really attractive. You don't have to use those metal furring channels. Um, the decoupling is incredible because it's just using silicone. And in general, I find contractors like to work with wood over metal. However, I have some horror stories of using these uh, hush frame rafts and I definitely don't recommend anyone using them and we don't recommend them anymore in our design firm. And I hate to throw someone under the bus, but we've just had such a bad experience with them that we've had catastrophic ceiling failures and I'm not alone. There's other designers out there who have reached out to me and said, hey, we had a lot of trouble with this product as well. So I've moved away from hush frame rafts and I do not recommend them even though they also can be, uh, they have a, a low profile, so they can project anywhere from a quarter of an inch to one inch based on the configuration of them. But like I said before, you're much better off sticking with a metal system that's rated for much higher standards of weight than you are for this hush frame raft connector that is relying entirely on the integrity of the silicone and the wood. Now there's something that I have to mention that's really important, and I would be selling you short if I didn't mention this, and that is that sound isolation is not just about the walls, and it's not just about the ceilings. In fact, most of the integrity of your sound isolation is gonna be coming from proper air sealing around all the gaps, getting proper doors, acoustic doors, acoustic windows, and making sure that there is no crosstalk between your ventilation systems and your HVAC system. So you could go through all this trouble of creating a soundproof wall to spec like I mentioned earlier, but if you don't sound isolate your HVAC system and you don't put in a soundproof door or a soundproof window, all of that will be for nothing because sound will escape around your wall through those other entry paths. So this is extremely important to remember that if you're on this journey of trying to reduce the amount of space in your soundproofing efforts, you still have to look at all the pieces of the puzzle. You can't skip one 
and hope that it will still work the way you want it to. I would also totally be remiss in not saying that there is a point where this slimmer system is just not going to work for the isolation needs that you have. Some examples would be if you want to play loud drums late at night and not bother your neighbors, I would highly recommend you need to do a more robust sound isolation system where there's a double wall. Another place would be if you have high levels of sound outside your room that you need to isolate against. Again, the Genie Clip LBs and the Genie Clip RSTs alone will not provide that level of isolation you may be looking for. This is where the guidance of someone like myself can really help pinpoint the nuance of how much isolation do you really need? Is STC55 enough? Do you need to do ST63? And how do we pull the whole system together so that both our doors and our windows and our walls, our ceilings and our floor are all even enough to give us that cohesive STC63 or 65 rating that we're looking for? So let me show you an example of a type of wall that will give you that higher STC rating and will deliver the results for those more high-end uh, problems that we're dealing with. All right, I've been showing this chart a lot on the channel lately, but it really drives home a lot of the points I've been trying to make, which is that this wall over here, the STC63 wall, is going to give you the best isolation for the budget that most people have. So with two layers of drywall on the exterior, you have a two by four wall, and then you have regular insulation. It could be pink insulation. It could be Owens Corning. It could be John Manfield. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be rock wool though. And then you can have a one inch air gap at a minimum. You can obviously make it larger, but that's not exactly what people are looking for when they're trying to reduce space, but a one inch air gap at a minimum, another two by four wall, and then two layers of five eighths inch drywall. If you are doing an exterior wall on one of them, just replace the two layers of drywall with two layers of 23 30 seconds OSB or even three quarter inch plywood if you have the budget. And then you can put siding over the top of that and that will give you the same amount of uh, weight as needed for replacing the drywall. So this is gonna take up more space. In general, you know, you're looking at here about 10 and a half inches. Uh, across the whole wall system. So you've got to keep that in mind if you're trying to do some serious sound isolation. And if we go back up here, we can see that the 63 range is indeed soundproof on this chart. And over here at this level, good soundproofing begins. Neighbors generally are not disturbed by very loud speech from inside. And I can tell from my own studio, I did this exact design here and we, I could play drums. I could do whatever I wanted. I could have full band rehearsals and I wouldn't bother the neighbors whatsoever. So this really is the, the gold standard. However, I will say for my new studio, I'm going to be doing the Genie Clip system because I don't have the space. So it's an exact example of that. And I'm okay with the STC 55 rating. It's plenty good for me. It's totally fine. So it's really on a dependent system of how much sound isolation do you need. So in conclusion, if you want the smallest possible footprint for your sound isolation walls and ceilings, the Genie Clip system is my go-to system. And it's tried and trusted, it's great, it can hold a lot of weight, it won't fall down, all those good things that we look for in a great product. So that is my recommendation to you. If you know that you need higher isolation needs, then you have to make peace with the fact that it's gonna take up more space in your room. There's just no way around the physics there. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this short little lesson on how small your walls and ceilings can be and how small of a footprint you can get away with with sound isolation. My name is Wilson Harwood and I am an acoustician and studio designer based in Nashville. I do this for a living. I run a company here called Soundproof Your Studio and we design studios all over the world. And then I just give everything away for free on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all those fun places. So if you are on this journey of trying to design a home recording studio, I definitely want to talk to you about it. Um, reach out for a soundproof clarity call and we can decide if potentially I could help you on this journey of designing your studio. To do that, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash step one and you can click on my calendar link and sign up for a 30 minute call right away. If you're not quite ready for a consultation, that's totally fine. If you're still in the research mode, I totally get that. That's why I have my free soundproofing workshop. It's 35 minutes of in-depth teaching going over how to build a studio in the backyard, in a basement, 
or in your garage. And this is where I give all the goods away in a concise, coherent lesson on how to do this right. So it's way easier and faster than searching endless YouTube videos. To watch that, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, I hope you all have had a wonderful time learning about soundproofing here. We have new videos and lessons and podcasts and blogs every Monday and every Thursday of this week, uh, of every week. And thank you all so much for watching again. My name is Wilson. I'll see you all next time. (laughs) 